Welcome to The Complete Musician, creativity at its core, exploring innovative musical ideas, thoughts, and techniques for the modern musician in today's society, with your hosts, James Nagus and Drew Phillips. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Complete Musician Podcast. I'm Drew, and this is the last in my little mini series on teaching uh, private lessons that I've been going on for a little bit now doing some shorter podcasts to talk about some things that have been on my mind lately uh, as I'm teaching a music ed class and being really introspective about my own teaching in my private studio and trying to better myself with the concepts that I'm giving to uh, my students and making sure I practice what I preach and still getting better as an educator because we all need to keep learning. So far, I've talked about planning, communication, instruction, and assessment, evaluation, and feedback in private lessons. And this is the last one, uh, this last part of uh, making a, a really superior private lesson that I found helpful is making sure that my sequencing is correct. Now, sequencing is the detailed order of your activities uh, and accomplishing your goals and your objectives uh, that is structured and supports your lesson's purpose. Uh, without a logical and understandable sequence of your activities, then you and your student will be confused as to what is actually being done. So your sequence has to make sense uh, along with all your activities or the objective will not be clear and the student will not know why in the world they're there or what in the world they're even hoping to accomplish, which is no good. So all of your activities have got to be detailed and they've got to have detailed instructions. Now that can come from your lesson plan. That can come from your procedure being practiced by saying it out loud. But no matter what, you need to have detailed instructions as to how they're done. Uh, even if you're improvising and making them up off the top of your head, that means that you need to know how to accomplish your activity. Uh, going back to content knowledge in the instruction area, uh, knowing how to do your activity, even if you're making them up, You've got to know what you're doing and how it fits into the overall pace of your activities. Uh, your sequence of activities, they need to lead to goal accomplishment. Um, unrelated activities in your sequence or your plan, they don't contribute uh, to your overall objective and they don't belong in your sequence if they don't contribute. For example, like you would not uh, isolate a note in a passage for pitch and then play that entire measure with the pitch play the entire phrase with that pitch you're trying to fix, then work on lip trills for five minutes, and then come back and play the entire excerpt in the music. That makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Your activities have to follow along something that lead to development and lead to goal acquisition and skill or concept acqu acquisition. In my mind, sequencing relies on scaffolding. Uh, scaffolding is a teaching term that means that you're going to introduce or practice an activity with lots of, of teacher constraint or teacher uh, assistance and gradually take away the teaching assistance until the student can do the thing on their own. For example, let's say a student is uh, practicing or playing in a musical excerpt and they can't play it in rhythm. A way to scaffold this is to uh, model that rhythm for the student so that you show them maybe by modeling by clapping and counting the rhythm and then asking the student to clap and count with you out loud so you do that activity then telling the student okay I'm gonna clap along with you but you're going to clap and count out loud I won't count out loud anymore so you do that activity then you tell the student okay now you're going to clap and count the rhythm out loud I'm going to conduct as you're doing this to keep pulse and they do that and they're successful with all this and then you say okay now you're going to clap and count on your own they do that and then you say now you can perform this on your instrument that's scaffolding we started with the teacher doing it so that's completely all on the teacher the student's not even doing anything at that point and then gradually including the student so that they're doing the activity with you but you're still doing it right there with them and they're going to copy you because you've modeled correctly hopefully and they're going to do exactly what you do then you gradually take that away by saying okay you're going to still count and clap out loud but I'm just going to clap with you so you're taking away the assistance of verbal reinforcement and verbal copying 
then you make them clap it and count it while you conduct. So you're taking away you clapping with them. Finally, they can do it on their own and then put it on the instrument. Scaffolding. That's an organic path to improvement, which makes your activities have a natural progression that's evident by the student to accomplish the goal. You need to make sure you isolate the thing that you're fixing or the activity, and then when that activity or thing is better, add to it by putting it in context or inventing another exercise to include the thing in repetition of the thing for consistency or something like that. But your activities and your organic path to improvement have to be recognized by the student or they're not going to understand what they're doing. Like I said in uh, a minute ago, if you were doing this rhythm exercise with a student by scaffolding and they don't understand why uh, once they get to the stage of you just conducting and them clapping and counting by themselves, but they don't understand where pulse is, you have to go back. You have to go back and, and make them realize that the pulse is consistent. You have to say, okay, or invent another activity saying, okay, now I'm just going to clap on the pulse instead of just conducting so that you hear it and you stick in that consistency. You have to go back and isolate that thing and only when the thing is better add to it, but you have to impress upon them why it's important to continue to wean off your assistance. So they have to recognize that. Um, in sequencing, like I said, your activities and all these have to accomplish a specific goal. So they've got to be structured, planned, and lead to the goal. Uh, they have to follow that natural organic path to improving the problem. And they have to build on fundamental skills to reach the area that needs improvement smoothly and quickly for efficiency because we're all we all have to think about efficiency now with how fast our world moves we don't have time to spend tons of time on little things anymore by uh by wasting time doing things that don't make sense be efficient go back to your fundamentals every time i try to improve technique with my own self or with my students i go back to my fundamentals of breathing good tone good articulation uh you know all those things that we learned in our first uh, first private lessons, or maybe at the beginning of the activity, something like that when we're trying to make them better. I always return to those, um, those fundamentals, and that really helps your sequencing and pacing your activities to accomplish your goals. I would love to hear how you guys sequence activities, uh, and I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on all of these episodes I've done. Again, there have been five now. Uh, on planning, communication, instruction, assessment, feedback, evaluation, and now sequencing. And my thoughts on what I've done and found useful in my own private teaching. I still have a lot to improve, a lot to learn, and I'm constantly learning. And my favorite way of learning and talking about pedagogy is by talking to my colleagues or talking to people who have been doing it. So uh, if you have experiences in teaching and you heard something that inspires you or that you like or that you do differently, let me know. I'd love to learn from you guys. And if you know me, you know that talking pedagogy is one of my favorite things in the world to do. So please reach out. Uh, you can contact me at our email at cormotohorn at gmail.com or my personal email at aphillips527 at gmail.com. Uh, this whole uh, little mini series has just been short podcast on teaching and uh, James and I, is both both of us as teachers, love to learn from you guys. So please subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, give us a rating uh, if you loved or hated us. Like us on Facebook. Get in contact with us. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, he'll be back from his whirlwind adventure very soon, and he'll have lots of stories on what he was doing and tell you everything that, that uh, he was doing on this little break. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to put this teaching stuff out there because it's been really important to me and it's been on my mind lately, trying to make myself a better teacher, hopefully inspiring others to also raise their, their teaching game and improve on the things that they know they can improve on. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening. I hope to hear from you soon. Soon. Uh, we'll be back with more content. Thank you all for listening.